Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we have many benchmarks and I know you guys always enjoy that. Last weekend I did look into whether or not Nvidia GPUs were gimping AMD Ryzen performance as alleged by a few viewers. Some were claiming that I should retest with the Fury X to see if Ryzen performed better than say it did with the GTX 1070. Now, typically I test at 1080p using quite high quality settings and throw in something very high end like the Titan XP as this removes, at least for the most part, the GPU bottleneck. This isn't true though for the GTX 1070 or Fury X. However, I didn't want to change up the testing method for that video. If Nvidia were indeed hampering Ryzen's gaming performance, it would clearly show as the Fury X would pull ahead of the GTX 1070. Instead, we ended up seeing what you'd expect to see. The Fury X was slower than the GTX 1070 and at no point indicated that there was any kind of gimping going on. Still, in that video, we saw a couple of really interesting things. Nvidia's DirectX 12 performance has greatly improved and as a result, under realistic conditions, the GTX 1070 looked great in relation to the Fury X. When testing with games such as Ashes of the Singular, Singularity Escalation, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and Hitman for example. That said, we found some interesting results in Rise of the Tomb Raider when comparing the R9 295X2 to the Titan XP. In fact, there was some kind of intense bottleneck going on here on the Ryzen 7 platform with the 1800X CPU, as the Titan XP was limited to GTX 1070 levels of performance. This limitation either seemed to be imposed by the Ryzen platform or Nvidia's own display driver. The next step was to take these graphics cards and test them at a lower resolution with lower quality settings to remove the GPU bottleneck. So this is what I've done. Well, sort of. A good number of you requested that I use the GTX 1060 and RX 480 for this testing, so that's what we've done. And they should be powerful enough to get the job done at the proposed quality settings. Those settings being a resolution of 1280 by 720 using the lowest quality presets available. I'm well aware these aren't settings gamers use, and well, that isn't the point of this test. In total, we have 13 games, five of which were tested using both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. The latest AMD and Nvidia display drivers were used, and once again, we have the 7700K and 1800X, both of which have been clocked at four gigahertz. Please be aware, I'm not trying to show which is the fastest CPU here, so cool your jets over the KB Lake down clock again. That's not the point of this video, and I won't be addressing comments relating to this. Both CPUs have also been tested using DDR4-3200 memory. I have some nice new CL14 stuff from G-Skill which works great with the Ryzen processors. Okay, so I think that's about everything you need to know for now. Let's start with the titles that support both DX11 and DX12. Looking at Rise of the Tomb Raider, we first see that the 7700K was just 5% faster than the 1800X when both are paired with the GTX 1060. That said though, if we compare the minimum frame rate, the 7700K is 14% faster. Now, moving over to the RX 480 results, we see that for the average frame rate, the 7700K is now 9% faster than the 1800X. The minimum also extends slightly to 18%. So what this means is using DX11, Ryzen actually performs worse in relation to the 7700K with the RX 480. Now, changing to the DirectX 12 API, we find a very different ball game. Starting with the GTX 1060 results, we find the 7700K is 14% faster when comparing the average frame rate. Swapping the GeForce graphics card for the RX 480, and now the 7700K is just 7% faster. Though you could argue that we might be running into a GPU bottleneck with the 7700K here at 172 FPS. The fact that there's an 18% variation in minimum frame rate performance using the RX 480 and just 15% with the GTX GTX 1060 certainly does suggest this. For those wondering, these results are based on the CAN benchmark. That said, I did take figures from the Geothermal Valley, and they do line up with what I was seeing from a custom pass using Presentmon. I can include those results later if need be, but I'll probably wait till Vega arrives before touching on this again. Moving on, we have Total War Warhammer, and using DirectX 11, we find that the 7700K does slightly better with the GTX 1060, while the 1800X was a fraction faster with the RX 480. These aren't exactly decisive margins though, so let's check out the DirectX 12 figures. Well, here we see that Ryzen looks significantly more competitive when using the RX 480. This is the most extreme example we've seen yet. 
The 77RK was 28% faster for the average and 27% faster for the minimum when using the GTX 1060, and this certainly explains our Titan XP results seen previously. Moving to the RX 480, and now KB Lake is just 9% faster on average and just 5% faster for the minimum. That's a seriously huge reduction in margin, though I should note that the minimum frame rate was slightly higher with the GTX 1060 for the Ryzen processor. The division was tested using DX11 and DX12, but first let's check out the DirectX11 numbers. Using the GTX 1060, the 7700K was 11% faster for the average and 7% faster for the minimum. Swapping to the RX 480, the average grew ever so slightly to 12%, while the minimum blew out to 12%. So when using DX11 in this title, Ryzen actually compares better using hardware from the green team. That said, we find a drastically different story when moving to the DirectX 12 numbers. Once again using the GTX 1060, the 7700K was faster than the 1800X. This time we saw 14% for the average and 11% for the minimum. Drop in the RX 480 and we find the 1800X matching the 7700K with roughly the same performance. That's a pretty interesting result right there, but let's move on and see what else we find. Deus Ex Mankind Divided provided some very interesting results indeed, and we're going to look at these a little differently. What's interesting to note here is that the 7700K with both graphics cards and the 1800X with the RX 480 all provided much the same performance regardless of the API used. So focus your attention on the 1800X with the GTX 1060. Now let's transition to the DX12 graph. See that? If you go back and forth, you can clearly see that it's really just the 1800X with the GTX 1060 that changes by any kind of significant margin here. This might make it difficult to claim that this is an NVIDIA driver issue, given that the 7700K doesn't suffer the same decline in performance. Of course, the 1800X works perfectly fine with the RX 480, so this could point to an NVIDIA driver issue, and I guess I'd say it's down to NVIDIA's DirectX 12 implementation, offloading items to the CPU in a way that's fine for Intel, but not optimised for Ryzen. Moving on, Ashes of the Singularity Escalation is an important game to include, as it's been recently updated to better utilise the Ryzen processors. Not only that, but once again we have some interesting results to check out. Here we see that regardless of which graphics card you use, the 1800X is faster than the 7700K. Now, please note I'm comparing the average frame rate figures from the normal and heavy batches, from the very intensive built-in benchmark. Frankly, this CAN benchmark does a much more extensive and better job of measuring in-game performance than I could. So we see that when it comes to the minimum frame rate, the 1800X and 7700K are very evenly matched. That said, for the average frame rate, the 1800X was 8% faster with the GTX 1060 and 11% faster with the RX 480. Not really a significant difference either way, certainly margin of error stuff, so I think it's safe to say that Ryzen is being represented correctly with either GPU. Battlefield 1 has a 200 FPS frame cap, and as you can see the GTX 1060 had no trouble reaching that with either processor. The 1800X does slip behind with the RX 480, but for the most part the results were pretty uneventful. Battlefield's DirectX 12 performance is still a bit sketchy, so I skipped that testing for now. There isn't too much point reading into the For Honor results. Using the 1800X, we see that the GTX 1060 and RX 480 deliver much the same performance. Again, certainly margin of error stuff. For whatever reason, we are hitting a CPU bottleneck with the 1800X, and this allowed the 7700K to deliver almost 30% more performance with the GTX 1060, which obviously doesn't seem right. Some Ryzen optimization needs to be done here. That said, under any kind of realistic conditions, this is primarily a GPU bound game, so a bit of a non-issue. F1 2016 is a surprisingly good game for testing CPU performance. Here we see when using the GTX 1060 that on average the 7700K is 15% faster. Moving to the RX 480 though, the margin is reduced to 9%. That said, don't jump up and down just yet. The RX 480 is limiting the performance of the 7700K here and affording the 1800X the ability to catch up. So this certainly isn't evidence of Ryzen performing better with an AMD GPU. Grand Theft Auto has been included because I know you guys want to see the results. So what do we see here? Using the GTX 1060, the 7700K was 9% faster on average and 6% faster with the RX 480, though again we are hitting a possible GPU bottleneck. 
Looking to the minimum frame rates, this certainly seems to be the case as the 7700K was 5% faster with the GTX 1060 and 6% faster with the RX 480. Not much in it though, so fair to say you are going to extract the maximum performance from either CPU in this title using either an AMD or Nvidia graphics card. Another title included at the request of you guys is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Here we see once again that the RX 480 is limiting the performance of both CPUs and we once again have to turn to the minimum frame rates. Doing so we see that the 7700K is 8% faster using either the GTX 1060 or RX 480. Back to some more interesting results, Mafia 3 always seems to deliver those. Now, as we've seen in the past with the Titan XP testing, the 1800X is able to best the 7700K in this title, even when overclocking the KB Lake CPU to the max. Here with the GTX 1060, the minimum frame rate was much the same, though the 1800X was 5% faster on average. However, if we test with the RX 480, quite shockingly, the 1800X falls behind and the 7700K is now seen delivering 6% more performance on average and 15% more for the minimum. So the RX 480 delivers quite the blow for AMD's own 1800X here. Capping things off, we have our final batch of fascinating results. Now these figures are very, very shocking indeed, and really amplify the effect just seen when testing with Mafia 3. Using the GTX 1060, the 1800X was just 6% slower than the 7700K, and given the difference in IPC performance, that's a great result. However, once we swap over to the RX 480, something goes horribly wrong. For whatever reason, the 1800X falls 25% behind the 7700K, or 33% if we look at the minimum frame rate. I'm honestly not sure what's going on here. It's certainly very strange that the 1800X looks so competitive with the 1060, but so extremely underwhelming with the RX 480. So are the Nvidia GPUs limiting Ryzen's gaming performance? Well, once again, I'd have to say no, they're not. Yes, there were a few DX12 scenarios where Ryzen did perform better in relation to the 7700K when paired with the RX 480, but if you're going to use that as evidence to somehow support the argument that Nvidia is handicapping Ryzen performance, then you would have to also acknowledge that AMD is handicapping Ryzen's DX11 performance, at least in some titles. So once again, it seems everyone has it out for Ryzen. Seriously though, we found some interesting stuff here, and it's things I'll be keeping in mind when benchmarking the Ryzen 5 CPUs in games. For games such as Deus Ex Mankind Divided or Total War Warhammer for example, I'd be sure to include an AMD GPU in the testing. For now though, I'll probably just drop these games until we have a more powerful single GPU graphics card from AMD. Likewise, I won't be testing with Rise of the Tomb Raider, though I never had any intention of using this game anyway. As a side note, I have to admit it really annoys me how much fuss was made over low resolution testing recently. It's quite obvious, to me at least anyway, that this is how reviewers should test and yet the backlash was quite extreme. Granted, it was just a vocal minority making all the fuss and based on the feedback I received from regular viewers, it was quite clear you guys understood the importance of removing a GPU bottleneck for testing CPU gaming performance. The fact that we had to test at 720p using low quality settings just to reveal why Ryzen has been struggling in DirectX 12 titles when using the Titan XP or other high-end Nvidia graphics cards just goes to prove this point. Additionally, you can't blame reviewers for using the most powerful GPU available for testing CPU gaming performance, it's just common sense. Anyway, what we found here really only impacts DirectX 12 performance, and for the most part I had focused on DX11 games for my Ryzen testing anyway. That's all for this one guys, it's certainly very interesting stuff, and I'm keen to revisit once we have a more powerful GPU from AMD once Vega arrives. Speaking of interesting stuff, Tim's review of that insane 240Hz ASUS ROG monitor will be on the channel tomorrow, so keep your eyes out for that one, and following that the next day we will have an in-depth look at Ryzen's memory performance. Then on Monday you can look forward to another video from Tim as he reviews Kingston's HyperX Revolver S headset. And finally, that would be followed by our official Ryzen 5 coverage. So that should keep you guys busy. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon.